big night. This means war. By Lincoln Purse. Everybody's got a dog but me. It would be so great if... Wait, what's this? Where do you come from, pup? Who's your owner? I have no owner. What? You can talk? Of course I can talk. And I'm looking for a kid I can converse with. That's me. I'll converse with you. Okay then. Answer me this. What was the significance of the Missouri Compromise? What kind of dog asks a question like that? I can't take it. Nate, stop. You can't bring food into the classroom. I know. I'll eat it out here. Is that a maple frosted donut? Yep. My favorite kind. Maple frosted is my favorite donut too. Ew. You kids have so much in common. This is a horrifying trend. What is? A few months ago, I found out that Mrs. Godfrey loves Star Trek The Next Generation as much as I do. And now I discover that my favorite donut is also her favorite donut. What does it mean? Can I tell him? Yep, just let me get his reaction on video. I hate to break this to you, Nate, but when people don't get along, it's usually because they're so similar, like you and Mrs. Godfrey. What? There's no comparison between me and Mrs. Godfrey. I have way better hair. It always comes back to the hair. You guys are nuts. I'm nothing like Mrs. Godfrey. I mean, she is a sociopathic pantlord. And? And I'm not! Are we sure? Jury's still out. Mrs. Godfrey, I'm, uh, conducting a survey. Yeah, a survey. What's your favorite snack food? That's easy. Cheese doodles. My life is over. Code Red. Honestly, Nate, why are you so bummed out of the ways you and Mrs. Godfrey are alike? What about the ways you're not alike? Uh, like what? Well, she loves social studies. And you hate social studies. Hey, hey, that's right. Good old Dee Dee. Plus, she's really smart. Ah! Danke, danke, danke. What's the matter? I'm nervous about the big game versus Jefferson tomorrow, so I'm trying to relax by bonking myself on the head with an empty plastic bottle. But it's not working. Try doing it harder. Clunk, 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 clunk. Ow, 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 ow. That didn't help. It's helping me. Still nervous about the big game? Yeah, I can't shake it. How do you guys deal with stress? Deep breathing. Power naps. Naked yoga. Too much info, Chad. And if that doesn't work, I play some thrash metal on my elbow. Sup, guys? Nate's nervous about the big game, Whitey. Ah. You need a hug, my man. Uh, I don't think so, Whitey. Oh, come on. Hugs make everything better. Yeah! Crack!
Whitey, what did you do? It was just a hug, dude. Just a hug? You crushed my spine. I heard a crack. Oh, never mind. There was a pretzel stick in my pocket. Oh, brother. Thanks, Whitey. Your hug actually worked. I don't feel nervous about the game anymore. It's only a game, right? Exactly. It's only a game against an undefeated team with four six-footers, each of whom is averaging a triple-double for the season. Bad stats timing, Francis. Sorry. Whitey, get back here. Man, these guys are good. Yeah, but we hung in there pretty darn well. I mean, we held him under a hundred points. That's a moral victory, am I right? No. It's only half time, you idiot. Oh. Oh no. It's Miranda. She always wants me to play with her. Leave this to the president of the drama club. Hi, Miranda. Are you making mud pies? They look delicious. Nom nom nom. Ooh, this is the most yummiest mud pie I've ever had. And here's money to pay for it. You're only pretending to pay me. Just like you only pretended to eat that mud pie, you faker. You're treating me like a baby. Splat. She plays dirty. Now you tell me. Mrs. Godfrey, how come I need to know all this stuff? I mean, what will be the practical use of all these historical facts in my life? It's not like I'll need to know social studies for my career. Unless I'm planning to be a social studies teacher, which I'm not. My goal is to be an artist or an athlete, something that has nothing to do with history. So why do I have to memorize so many useless names and dates? Because it's going to be on the test. Social studies is your Waterloo, huh? Whatever that means. Amazing! I can't believe how packed it is. It's the messiest lock in school. Chuckle. You're so right, ladies. My locker is legendary. Your locker? We're talking about Kyle's locker. What? He can find anything in there. All right, Kyle. What's this all about? My locker has always been the messiest one in school. Now everyone's talking about your locker. Firm! I can't imagine why. This means war. Look, Nate, your locker was fine in its day, but now it's time for you to step aside. My lock is a treasure trove. I can find anything in here. Kyle, I need a glue gun to finish my art project. Here you go, Annie. One glue gun. You're awesome, Kyle. There's a new sheriff in town, cowboy. I'm getting very annoyed. So, Kyle... You're claiming that you can find anything in your locker. Yep. Well, I'm claiming that I can find anything in my locker. Looks like there's only one way to settle this. I challenge you to a slob off! Wowza! Okay, folks, it's a slob off. A contest to see whose locker contains the most stuff. Kyle, let's start with you. Hold it. We have to figure out the rules first. Russell, Russell. Got a complete set of rules right here. 
He is good. I have here a list of things you both have to find in your respective lockers. Kyle, you're up first. Can you locate a desert item in that pile? Russell, Russell, Russell. Piece of cake. Game on. Kyle, you found the first nine items on this list in your locker. If you find the tenth, you get a perfect score. What's the tenth item? A copy of Ban in the Sky, a 1954 novel by James Ramsey Ullman. Russell Russell. Hardcover or paperback? You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Let's see if you can match Kyle's perfect score, Nate. Open your locker. Okay, but cover your ears. When the contents reach escape velocity, it'll break the sound barrier. Oh, come on. That's ridic- Click. Boom. You were saying? That was for you, Kyle. What's going on? Nate and Kyle are having a slob off to see who has the messiest locker. Who's winning? Well, they both found plenty of crazy stuff in their lockers. But I give Nate the edge on style points. One cockatoo as requested. Squawk! Hey Kyle, bite me! That does it. Nate's found all ten items on the list. In other words, all he did was match me. It's a tie. Yeah, I guess you're right, Kyle. It's a tie. Russell, Russell. Unless I find a way to untie it. Kyle? Wait, what just happened? It's very simple, Kyle. I found you in my locker. I've always said I can find anything in there, and I just proved it. The winner and still champion! Remember when students competed against each other academically? Not really. I don't understand how your locker works, Nate. You say you can find anything in there. But some stuff would be impossible to find, right? I mean, ha <laughs> ha Like what if I asked you to find my pants? These pants? Gah! Mandy lives in Los Angeles. Todd lives in Boston. They plan to meet in St. Louis which is 1,825 miles from Los Angeles and 1,192 miles from Boston. If Maddie takes a train traveling at a constant speed of 80 miles per hour and Todd drives a car at a constant speed of 55 miles per hour, which of them will reach St. Louis first? That depends on who are these people. You've told us nothing about their lives. First of all, are they a couple? Is this a romance? Because if it is a romance, wouldn't Todd drive way faster than 55 miles per hour? I mean, he'd be all fired up to see Mandy, right? And for that matter, wouldn't Mandy take a plane and get to St. Louis in like three hours? Especially, she hasn't seen Todd in a while. Of course, we have no idea how long it's been since these two lovebirds have been together because you've decided not to tell us. Plus, anything could happen while they're traveling. What if Todd stops for gas and the cashier is a total smoke show? He's like, Mandy who? Basically, I can't come up with an answer until I have some real intel on these people. Frankly, I can't believe you even asked the question. Also, Todd and Mandy are dorky names. This isn't what I meant by show your work. Arthur, ever played the scribble game? Here, make a scribble. A scribble? Okay. 
Now I'll turn that scribble into something. One masterpiece coming up. Ah, oh, very nice. Now I'll make a scribble for you. Don't feel bad if yours isn't as good as mine, Arthur. After all, I'm an expert at this game and you're done. Oh, how I hate him. Did I do it right? Before we start practice, gang, I have an announcement. Cressley's Bakery won't be sponsoring our team this season. The good news is, this means you no longer play for a team called the Cupcakes. The bad news is, say goodbye to the post-game pastry platter. No! Easy, Chad. Coach, I know who could sponsor our team this year. Classic Comics. I'm an unpaid intern there. I've done hours and hours of free work for them. They owe me. What about the time you spilled Rutabia on the entire X-Men inventory? We owe each other. Uh-huh. Hi, Nate. Hi, Gordy. Hi, Wayne. Wayne, I have a proposal. How would classic comics like to support America's pastime? Mumble, 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 mumble. No, Dungeons and Dragons isn't America's pastime. Not a promising start. Wayne, if Classic Comics sponsors our team, it's free advertising for you. We could invent a team name that works for baseball and comics, like Batman. Get it? Mumble, 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 mumble. A bat is the stick they used to hit the ball. Yikes. Guys, success! Classic Comics is gonna sponsor our team. Awesome! Wayne said he'd give us a cool comics related name. We could be the Avengers. We could be the Wolverines. We could be the Fantastic Four. There are nine players on a baseball team, Pinhead. Oh, yeah. I don't want to be the thing. He's gross. Pinnacle Sportswear. This is it. Hi, we're picking up some baseball uniforms. The sponsor is Classic Comics. Ah, yep. Here you go, boys. They're all yours. Interesting name. Go! The Little Lulus. Our new team name is the Little Lulus. <laughs> That's funny. And you know what? what's even more hilarious? It makes us sound like a bunch of girls. That's a riot, Chad. Wayne, what's the idea of calling our baseball team the Little Lulus? When you agreed to sponsor us, I thought you were going to give us a cool superhero name. Mumble, 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 mumble. He says little Lulu is a superhero and he'll defend her to the death. Death sounds like a good option right about now. Hey, hey, are those any uniforms? Yup. How do they look? Are they sharp? Well, I've got good news and bad news. Give us the good news. Our team name is the Little Lulus. Say what? That's not the good news, Chad. It's not? So we call the Little Lulus now? Yeah, sorry guys. With Classic Comics as a sponsor, I thought the mascot would be Spider-Man or something. Instead, our mascot's a little girl. What's wrong with little girls? Not a thing, big fan. Nate, being named the Little Lulus isn't the end of the world. After all, Lulu can be defined as a description of something exceptional. 
we can use the word to cheer each other on. Like, get a hit, chat, and make a lulu. Ah, <laughs> I'll try. My head is about to explode. If you don't like the name Little Lulus, why not cut it in half? What do you mean? Well, Lulu is a girl's name, but half of Lulu is a boy's name, Lou. So we could call ourselves the Little Loose. That makes us sound like a British toilet. Which is a good place for this conversation. Are you still upset about her team name? No, I've decided we should embrace it. Little Lulu's might not be a tough sounding name, but we can intimidate our opponents in other ways. Yeah, like we could all stop shaving. Wait, what? Chad, you shave? Who doesn't? Chad, are you telling us you shave? Yup, you shave your face every day. I don't believe it. Believe it, facial hair runs in my family. If my gram didn't shave, she'd have a full beard. That I believe. Chad, are you pulling our leg? Yeah, do you really shave every day? Yup. Well, what would happen if you didn't? <laughs> what do you think? There'd be whiskers all over the place. That sounds like a YouTube channel about cats. I'd look like a ginger pulled bunyan. Hi guys, notice anything different about me? Uh, no. I didn't shave this morning. Yep, just gonna let my face go wild for a few days. See the stubble? No. Those are freckles, Chad. Check it out, fellas. Day two of not shaving. Go ahead, feel my face. Ever heard the phrase, smooth as a baby's bottom? Ah, <laughs> yeah, if the baby's bottom is made of sandpaper. Are you serious? He shaves? Yep, but the other day he stopped. And now he's convinced that he's going to grow up. Hi, guys. Chad is magical. And a little bit scary. Code John, let's say you played on a baseball team with a really stupid name. How do you act tough when your name sounds so wussy? You want to be tough? Well, I'll show you how to be tough. Saddle up, cowboy. Arm wrestling time. Who, boy? So your ball team has a sissified name, eh, Junior? Yeah, the little Lulus. Ah, the beloved comic book Moppet. You know about little Lulu? I have a tattoo of her on my left butt cheek. Okay, that's weird. And on the right cheek? Sliced alone. I just asked Code John how to be tough, but he wasn't very helpful. You should ask Chester. He's the toughest kid in school. Chester? I'm looking for someone who's tough and a psychopath. Gah! He's behind me, isn't he? Behind and above. Chester, I was just looking for you. What for? I was wondering if you could teach me how to be tough. Sure. Crunch. Suck it up. Will do. Why the interest in being tough all of a sudden? Just preparing myself, Teddy. The season starts tomorrow. 
We have to be tough enough to deal with all the other teams mocking us. I don't think they'll mock us because we're called the Little Lulus. Really? I think they'll mock us because we were 3-15 and 15 last year with a team batting average of no stats, Francis. Ah, opening day. Hey look, the other team has new uniforms too. Randy, you guys aren't Al's Autogloss anymore? Uh, no, we're sponsored by Bailey's Candles now. Okay, lollipops, let's warm up. Lollipops? We're no longer at the bottom of the name chain. So long, sucker. Hi, Didi. Nate, did you see the big news in the paper? America's top talent search is coming to town. This is my chance to be discovered. It says they're expecting 5,000 people to show up. Yes, but I, do those people sing and dance like I do? Let's hope not. Should I sing a cappella or bring my kazoo? Thanks for coming with me to the audition, Nate. Wow, look at all these people. I guess everybody wants to be the next great singer. It's not just a singing competition. Some of us have talents that are more refined. Like what? I can shuffle a deck of cards using only my belly button. Didi, what are you doing here? Obviously, Zoe, I'm here to audition. Oh, like when you auditioned for the spring musical and I got the part? Only because I had a cold that day. Well, guess you'd better warm up your voice. So should you. La 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 la. Me, 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 me. Cripes. We're almost at the front of the line. Ooh, I'm nervous. What if I mess up again? Again? So you've auditioned before? Yes, but it didn't go well. You didn't sing good, huh? I'm not a singer. I'm a knife juggler. Ah. I wanted to keep going, but the EMT thought otherwise. You're up. Go get him, Didi. Next stop, Hollywood. Next stop, Hollywood and... <sighs> Here's a list of the people who made it to the next round of America's top talent search. Five singers, two dancers, a comedian, a magician and a mime. I was beaten by a mime. That sounds like a true crime drama on the streets of Paris. I was beaten by a mime. I envy you, Sherman. You don't have to go to school. You don't have to do homework. And you don't have to deal with teachers making your life miserable. Do you know how it feels to have Mrs. Godfrey yell at you in front of the whole class? No, of course you don't. You're a gerbil. All you do is eat and sleep. You have no problems. You have no idea how lucky you are. This is where I point out that I live alone in a glass box. Hiya, Vern. Charlie, long time no see. You got any skin in this game? Yup, that's my grandson in the on-deck circle. But why are you here? You have no grandkids. I love baseball, that's all. Pro Bowl has been ruined for me. The cheating scandals, the bloated salaries. But a little league game? That's unspoiled, that's pure. 
There's nothing transactional about it. Just kids playing ball for grams. Remember our agreement? If I hit a home run, you owe me ten dollars. I was going to say for the love of the game, but never mind. And an ice cream. Gina, here's my comic strip for the next edition of the Weekly Bugle. Mr. Smalvin, world's boring as science teacher. Yup. It's just four panels of him sitting at a desk. Right, because he's secretly in a coma. You can't be in a coma secretly, you pinhead. It's called understatement. Forget it, Nate. I'm not putting your stupid comic strip in the weekly bugle. Why not? Because Mr. Smalvin is obviously based on Mr. Galvin. We can't print cartoons that insult teachers. I'm not insulting teachers. Well, what would you call it? Following my bliss. Can you follow it that way? You're always drawing comics that make fun of other people. Why not make fun of yourself for once? Because, Gina, a good cartoon has to be believable. Who's going to believe a comic strip that makes me look like a buffoon? Yo, me, same here. Hey, shut up, clowns! Gina challenged me to draw a comic strip that doesn't make fun of teachers. How's that going? Not good. I can't think of anything. I'm just standing around waiting for inspiration to strike. Doof! Okay, Gina, you wanted me to draw a comic strip that doesn't insult teachers? Ask and you shall receive. Here. Nina. Nina, obnoxious, great grubbing editor of the school newspaper. Catchy title, right? I hate you so much. How dare you draw a comic strip about me? You expect me to print this? Gina, think of it as a character building opportunity. I'm giving you the chance to laugh at yourself. Except I'm not laughing. Okay, then I'm giving me the chance to laugh at you, which is even better. Jenny, what do you want? Wow, don't act so happy to see me. The eye roll, the big sigh, thanks for the welcome. Uh, I just thought you thought I was going to flirt with you. Get over yourself, Jenny. I stopped having a crush on you long ago. I was just being friendly, unlike some people I know. Wait, you're right. I'm sorry, Nate. I shouldn't have assumed you wanted something. Right, I want nothing. Except a quick look at your math homework. Okay, now the crush is really over. Ah, I stink at drawing comics. I never have any good ideas. You've got a writer's block, Chad. You know what to do when that happens to me? I stop thinking and just draw something outrageous. The crazier, the better. Ding dong. What if it doesn't make sense? It doesn't have to. In comics, stuff happens all the time that would never happen in real life. Hmm. But what if it's not funny? Then I add a duck. Guys, bad news. What is it? Guess. How are we supposed to guess? Give us a hint, at least. It's school related. Is the cafeteria going to stop serving tater tots? Worse. 
Where's the notator, Tots? Just tell us! Here's the bad news. The school budget for next year has been cut. Meaning what? PS38 has to eliminate non-essential programs. What's a non-essential program? Art. They're getting rid of Mr. Rosa. No! Mr. Rosa, is it true the school is firing you? They're not firing me exactly, but they're eliminating my job, so the end result is the same. This is a strategy. What will you do without me? And what will we do without him? Huh? Oh yeah, that too. Mr. Rosa, this is totally unfair. Why is the school kicking you to the curb? Well, don't they realize how awesome you are? You're the perfect teacher. You're just burned out enough not to care about what we do. Flatterer. I mean, you let us get away with anything. Principal Nichols. How can you get rid of Mr. Rosa? It's not my call, Nate. The town council is in charge of the school budget. They're voting on it tomorrow. Tomorrow? So this isn't final yet. Well, it's all but decided. There's virtually no chance of... Keep hope alive! Saddle up, guys. We're going to the town council meeting tomorrow. What for? The school budget isn't a done deal. We can still convince them not to cut Mr. Rose's job. How will we do that? By any means necessary. Can we lock arms and sing protest songs? I don't want to get tear gassed. Where are you kids going? We're here for the council meeting. The council is conducting serious business. This is no place for kids. Actually, yes it is. According to Article 9 of the town charter, all council meetings are open to the public. Go on in. Francis is a secret weapon. The first item on the agenda is the school budget, which we discussed at length during our last meeting. Are there any comments or concerns before we proceed to a vote? Yo. I may regret asking for comments or concerns. Nate Wright, Scorpio. You have something to say about the school budget, young man? You bet I do. You guys are cutting the art program. You call it non-essential. But there's all sorts of other non-essential stuff you could get rid of. What do you have in mind? Well, let's start with social studies. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, this school budget is an outrage. It's going to cost our best teacher his job. But guess what? My classmates and I have a solution to this problem. Francis, bring up the pie charts. Did somebody mention pie? Sit down, Chad. As shown here, the proposed school budget cuts the art program down to nothing. At the same time, you're spending a million dollars on synthetic turf for the high school football team. Explain that. It just got very quiet in here. Perhaps we should call a short recess. How dare the town council say that art is a non-essential program? Art is how we kids get in touch with their creative sides. Look! If it wasn't for art class, I never would have made this clay sculpture of a dolphin. That's adorable. Maybe these kids have a point. Behold the power of Chad. 
Mr. Rosa, I heard the great news. Yes, my job is safe. And it's thanks to you, Nate, and the other kids who spoke to the town council. He must have been quite persuasive. Not persuasive enough. My sea monkey proposal got zero traction. Sea monkey proposal? Isn't it awesome that we helped save Mr. Rose's job? I know. Our opinion actually counted for something. I guess we students have more power than we realize. Quiet over here. You talk only when I give you permission to talk. Maybe power is the wrong word. We're just rats in a stinking maze. All clear. Come on, Chad. Why are we sneaking into the detention room? To see if Miss Cheriki left one of her books in here. Yes, she did. She lost these cheesy romance novels. They're a riot. Was that a knock she heard? Sylvia rushed across the parlor and swung open the front door. There holding an enormous box of bonbons and wearing on his rugged face a devilish smile, stood the dashing Gregory. Her heart faltered. Could this be happening? Good evening, my lady, he said, and the sound of his voice gave her chills. I hope you'll not think it forward of me to call on you in this fashion, but since our last meeting at Count Pendrick's castle, you have haunted my every dream. A fierce joy welled up inside her, so he did care. Sylvia could contain herself no longer and fell into his arms. Oh, my darling, she cried. They embraced in a passionate kiss, her heart pounding with ecstasy. What's ecstasy? I think it just means she's happy to see him. <laughs> Well, no wonder he brought candy. Guess what, kiddos? Your sixth grade book buddies are here. Peter, my boy. Go away. I don't need a book buddy. Of course you don't, Peter. I totally get that. You're a genius. You're way beyond the books your classmates are reading. Bibbity Bunny takes a bath. Petunia's perfect picnic. This junk is a waste of your time. That's why we're going to read a book I wrote myself. It's called Invasion of the Brain Sucking Cheerleaders. It was quiet in the hallways of Elmwood High School. Too quiet. Ooh. Cripes. Mrs. Godfrey, Nate keeps bouncing his leg. Nate, stop bouncing your leg. What's wrong with me bouncing your leg? It's annoying. Well, if Gina gets to complain about my bouncing, I get to complain about a chronic flatulence. Shut up! There's some serious swamp fog back here. Mrs. Godfrey, I don't think it's fair that you listen to Gina's complaints about me and not my complaints about her. Hmm, I see. Well, Nate, you've given me something to think about. All right, I've thought about it. Sit down and shut up. The train of injustice rolls on. I hate it when teachers play favorites. They're supposed to treat us all the same. Mrs. Godfrey loves her some Gina, but she treats me like garbage. Well, what do you expect? Gina never gives Mrs. Godfrey any trouble. You give her trouble all the time. Me? How do I give her trouble? Well, yesterday... 
That wasn't my fault. I was all hopped up on Mountain Dew Code Red. All I'm saying is Mrs. Godfrey treats me differently than she treats the rest of you guys. Yes, because you have a history of boneheaded behavior. What does history have to do with social studies? Spoken like a true C student. Hey, hey, I'm a solid C+. Plus. Pick a card, Francis. Any card. Don't show it to me. Don't tell me what it is. Okay. Now put it back in the deck. Now I'll shuffle them and whoops. Hang on. I can do this. Let's see here. Your card is the king of clubs. No, it's not. What kind of a lame card trick is this? He said it's a card trick. I was just distracting you while Teddy stole your brownie. It's the best thing on the whole school lunch menu. The spaghetti, on the other hand, is not great. Same with the fruit cocktail. What's wrong, Chad? Some kid just stole my beanbag chair. He said move it, Tubby, and just took it. I'll get you your seat back, Chad. Whoa, what a day, huh? I'm beat. Think I'll kick off my sneaks and take five. Ah, oh, that's better. These puppies need to breathe. <coughs> When there's trouble afoot, I'm your man. Thanks. Put your shoes on. I know someone who likes you. You do? Who is it? Madeline? No. Allie? No. Skylar? No. Anna? No. Becca? No. Claire? No. Rachel? No. Georgia? No. We're plunging down the 6th grade hotness depth chart. You're in no position to be picky. Just tell me, Dee Dee, who likes me? I'll give you a hint. If you and she get together, you'll be a real short, tall couple. Uh, would I be the tall or the short? Yes. It's cute that you asked. Pat, pat. So whoever likes me is tall, huh? Yep. Just tell me it's not Brianna. What's wrong with Brianna? She's super nice. I know she's nice, but... But what? They don't call her Big Bird because she's an ontology nut. Hi. Oh, hi, Brianna. Hi, Nate. Did Didi tell you? Uh, tell me what? That I like you, of course. You're just my type. Ruggedly handsome? Short. So you like short guys, huh? Oh yeah, short guys are cute. Well, I hate to break it to you, Brianna, but I'm not short. I'm a solid 4'10". Uh, no. You're 4'8 at best, and at least 2 inches of that is hair height. She's downsizing me. Let's call you 46 and adorable. Look, Brianna, I'm flattered that you like me and everything, but I just can't see myself going out with a girl who's a foot taller than I am. In other words, your fragile ego can't handle it. You're lost, Nate. I feel some more. Join the club. Hey, that's not your backpack. Oh, isn't it? You're doing it again, aren't you? Doing what? This is Nate's latest technique for meeting girls. He accidentally grabs a girl's backpack at the end of the day. Then he has an excuse to approach her later. Exactly! It's genius! I'll just stroll up to her and say, Hey! 
You stole my backpack, you spy-killer troll. And here's yours. Wham. When he said it's genius, what do you think he meant? There's a lot to unpack there. You know what? This place is grim. How so? All the teachers are a bunch of stone faces. They never laugh. Have you ever seen Mr. Galvin laugh? Or Mrs. Godfrey? Or Code John? Sure, I've seen them all laugh. Sadistic cackling doesn't count. Oh, then no. Teddy and I are on a mission to make every teacher in the school laugh. We're calling it Operation Crack Up. Here comes Mrs. Godfrey. Sort of a botched operation, wasn't it? I froze. Same. Here comes Code John. Activate Operation Crack Up. Hey, Code John, what do you call a duck on a surfboard? I don't call it anything. I have no time for such foolishness. Now line up for wind sprints. I hate this place. Here comes Mr. Galvin. Activate Operation Crack Up. Hey, Mr. Galvin, here's a joke. A joke? If you like jokes, take a look at your latest test score. There's a joke for you. Rimshot. Was that necessary? Mr. Staples, have you heard about Operation Crack Up? What's that? We're trying to make every teacher in the school laugh. Huh? Good luck with that. Not really a laugh, more like a knowing chuckle. I'll give him half credit. Mrs. Godfrey, how can you never laugh? What are you saying? Are you saying I've no sense of humor? Is that it? Or perhaps you're suggesting that I don't know how to laugh. Well, are you? This one sat in a hurry. Yeah, it was pretty much a complete failure. What was? Operation Crack Up. Teddy and I spent a week trying to make teachers laugh. What a fiasco. Most of them didn't even smile. And there goes the chief offender. Mr. Galvin would know a smile if it bit him. You want Mr. Galvin to smile? Padma locks me. Rawr. You've got to know which buttons to push. The Amazing Adventures of Super Dad and Ultranate. One day in the Dad Cave. What's that, Commissioner? Kid COVID is on the loose? To the Dadmobile. Uh, sorry about all the fast food wrappers. According to the villain tracker, Kid COVID is at the supermarket. Soon. There he is. Masks on, chum. He's toxic. Surrender, Kid COVID. Forget it, Super Dad. You can't stop me. In fact, according to the distancing rules, you can't even get close to me. Please stay six feet from others. Crash! Saved by an essential worker. Actually, I was just moving him out of the express lane. Stick a fork in him. He's done. Hand in your homework, everyone. Nate, where's your homework? Oh, uh, well, uh, Hong Kong, Hong, Hong Kong, Hong. Fire drill people, line up! It's a miracle! This is amazing! Godfrey was just about to nail me for not doing the homework. Then, pow! 
fire drill. What's so amazing about it? This is not a coincidence, Francis. I prayed for it to happen. I asked God to get me out of a tight spot and the big guy delivered. Doesn't the big guy have other things on his mind right now? Apparently not, which is awesome. Woohoo! A fire drill during social studies. What a break. It's not that exciting, Nate. In five minutes we'll be back in class. But what if it's a real emergency, not just a drill? What if there's a gas leak and all the lunch ladies are screaming and running from the cafetorium? Shockingly, I hadn't thought of that. Hey, I'm just looking at best case scenarios. Mr. Rosa, why is the fire drill lasting so long? It's not a drill, boys. A gas leak was detected in the kitchen. Gas leak? I just said that! Guys, I predicted this. I have the gift of prophecy. With all due respect, I question God's choice of prophets. Yak, 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 yak. The dude moves in mysterious ways. Ah, a gas leak emergency in the middle of social studies. Now I don't have to worry about the homework I didn't do. I've got the textbook right here. Do it now. Are you insane? That was going to be my question. All right, everyone. Crisis averted. Back into the building. Proceed to your third period classes. Principal Nichols? Can I rest in the nurse's office? I've been traumatized by this whole experience. You've been traumatized by sitting on the playground for two hours? We all experience trauma in different ways. Consumer alert with Biff Biffwell. Are you a single person looking for love? If so, please note this important advisory. Alert! Alert! Some of the enchanted dots used by renowned matchmaker Dan Cupid are defective. In this secretly recorded incident, Dan targets Dad, a lonely bachelor. Then he identifies Debbie, a potential love match. But wait, watch carefully. Debbie's dot is a dud. The result? Dad is smitten but doesn't realize that Debbie is not. Shall we exchange phone numbers? Observe what happens later when Dad tries to call the number Debbie gave him. Beep, beep, boop, 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 beep, boop. It's no longer in service? Sad. Class, I'm splitting you into small study groups to review for the final exam. I want you over here, Nate. You'll be working with Lily and Keisha. Good luck, girls. Good luck, girls? Really? If you drag us down to your level, I'll rip your lips off. I can't believe we have to study with you. What's that supposed to mean? We're A students. You're a C student. Exactly. We balance each other out. We'll study together, we'll take the test, and we'll all end up with a B. Everybody's happy. Not everybody. Then it's summer and we can forget all this garbage. Let's start by pooling our resources. Here are all my notes from this semester, and here are mine. We're ready when you are. I'm not really a notes person. There are 11 chapters to review for the final. I'll break down chapters 1 to 4, Lily will break down chapters 5 to 8, and you'll break down 9 to 11. Got it? Uh, that depends. What do you mean by break down? 
I'm describing my current mental state. Oh, then can we take five for a snack break? Look, Einstein, all we're asking you to do is write a few chapter summaries. Yeah, it's not that complicated. Okay, okay, I'll do it. But I'm not going to get all bogged down by a bunch of names, dates and events. That's basically what social studies is, you pinhead. Not to me. I look at the big picture. Here, I did summaries for the last three chapters. What? Well, these are amazing! If you can do work this good, why don't you do it all the time? I'm pacing myself. For what? No idea. Plus, I hate memorizing stuff. You guys ready for the social studies final? I think so. Yup. I figured it out last night. If my grade is an 84 or better, I'll get an A for the semester. And if I get a 95, that'll mean an A+. Plus. I need a 92 on the final to get an A in the class. To get an A+, plus, I'd need a perfect score and extra credit. What about you, Nate? I'm in great shape. I can go as low as a 54 on the final and still maintain a solid C-. minus. It's good to have goals. What if you wanted to do better than a C-? minus? I did not calculate that. Last day of school. Prank day. What do you have in your bag of tricks, Nate? Let's see. Click. Boom! Mr. Galvin's pants just exploded. A remote. Nate, it's come to my attention that Mr. Galvin's pants just exploded. What do you know about this? Not a single thing. Meaning you might know multiple things. I know multiple things about a variety of topics. Are you playing semantics with me? That depends on what you mean by semantics. It's an honor watching you in action on prank day, Nate. Thanks, Chad. What are you going to do next? You! Stay away! Get back! Back, I say! Sometimes it's what you don't do. Done. What's done? I was just in the faculty parking lot. All the teachers' car radios are now programmed to play Alice Cooper's School's Out forever at maximum volume. In your own warped way, you're a genius. How do you get into all those cars? Stealthily. Whoa, these kids have left the building. It's all over. I made it through another year. Splurge! Was that the enraged howl of a school principal who just sat in a pile of chocolate pudding? It was butterscotch. What a beautiful beach. It sure is. It looks just the same as it did 50 years ago. Yes, which was the perfect spot for our honeymoon. And it's still the perfect spot for a second honeymoon. Happy anniversary, Miss Ellison. And to you, Mrs. Ellison. Tongue! Sorry, my bad. Hooked your tea shot. I can see this hole. Oh no, here comes Kim. What's wrong with Kim? She's decided she likes me again. 
You watch. She's going to sit right next to me. Then she'll ask me to rub sunscreen on her back. Hey, what's your prop, Wimpus? You got sand all over me. S sorry, it is an accident. Yeah? Well, here comes another accident. Leave him alone or I'll break your legs and feed you to the fish. Can I rub some sunscreen on your back? You'd better. Peter, my boy. What do you want? Your mom is on a conference call, so she asked me to watch you. Fine. I think she meant watch in a more interactive way. I can read aloud, but I'm warning you, there are lots of big words. Ah, oh, this is more like it. Why must we be outside? Because, Peter, your mum wants you to get some exercise. And you know what's a great way to exercise? Playing with a dog. Or a close approximation. Welcome back to The View. Spitzy, I'd like to introduce you to Peter. Peter doesn't have much experience with dogs, but he's anxious to learn. Wolf, zip! I'm taking notch. Please don't. One thing dogs love to do, Peter, is play tug. The old one end of the rope, Spitzy, holds the other and yank! Was that awesome or what? I suspect I may be more of a cat person. I don't see what's so great about dogs. Are you kidding me, Peter? Dogs are incredible. They're loving. They're faithful. They're brave. Zow! Whimper! They're not afraid of the ice cream truck. That's embarrassing. Peter, you may think you don't like dogs, but that's just because you haven't been around them much. But give it time. Eventually, you'll find yourself bonding with them. <sighs> Please tell me this isn't what you mean by bonding. Here's a bag. Go for it. We should have a real adventure this summer, guys. The kind of heart-pounding experience they make movies about. I can't. I'm going to my grandparents' lake house tomorrow. Let's schedule an adventure for late in the summer. You don't schedule adventures, Francis. Adventure does not punch a time clock. I have an oboe lesson at 3.30. Didi, want to have an adventure this summer? Ooh, what kind of adventure? I'm not sure yet. Something high stakes like in Stand By Me. Stand By Me? That's totally a boy movie now, thank you. I'll tell you what I would do, though. Whatever a sisterhood of the Travelling Pants adventure is, I want no parts of it. Just think about it. Teddy, listen to this great idea. I was thinking we could... Yo, what? You have the chicken pox? Great. Now who can I find to go on a cool adventure with me? I'll do it. Agah! Kim, oh, what's up? I heard you invite me on an adventure. Uh, I was actually just thinking out loud. I don't have any definite plans. I can do that part. I'm a planner. I will take us on a madcap quest full of thrills, chills, danger, and leading inexorably to a torrid summer romance. No! 
listen, Kim. I'm just looking to have some kind of adventure. I said nothing about romance. And why are you even bringing it up? You're going out with Chester. Chester's abandoned me for the summer. He's gone away to anger management camp, thus unwittingly driving me into your arms. He'll be devastated. I know how he feels. We're here. This is where we'll have our adventure. The Chapman house? But it's supposed to be haunted. Exactly. It will be terrifying. Enough fear and panic will cling to each other's bodies with a vice-like intensity. Now get in there. Shove. I may very well wet my pants. Wow, it's dark in there. Well, obviously, it's abandoned. Huh? Guess we can't go inside. And what's the point if we can't see anything? Just download a flashlight app on your phone, genius. How stinking convenient. You're cute when you're dim-witted. My dad says this house belonged to Captain Chapman, whose ship went down in a storm. Now his spirit haunts this place. Hold it! If he was lost at sea, why did his ghost end up here? Because his body washed up on shore, half eaten by sharks. So if we do see his ghost, it'll probably be just a bloody torso. I don't feel so good. This house is totally creepy. It's like an episode of Scooby-Doo. I'm like Daphne, and you're like Shaggy. Wait a minute, I'm not Shaggy. Shaggy's a coward. He's a quivering, shivering mass of... Uh, zoinks! But what was that noise? Probably the ghost of Captain Chapman. The bad news is, he wants to kill us and make us join the crew of his ghost ship. The good news is... We'll die together. You stink at the good news, bad news thing. Actually, we might live. Hi, guys. Chad? I thought you were a ghost. Who, me? Uh-huh, nope. But we heard this freaky noise. Oh, that. Yeah, that was me. I was playing my oboe. In a haunted house? but it sounded like the screeching of a crazed banshee. It is on top of old Smokey. Chad, why are you playing ob your oboe in the Chapman house? I had to practice. I like to be alone when I'm learning a new song. It helps me concentrate, plus the acoustics in there are really good. It's like playing in a theater. Also, my gram threw me out of the house so she could watch Outlander. Poor Chad. How do you think I should pitch this guy? Tough to say. He hits everything. I could try to bust him inside. He did that last time. He fought it off. I know, but at least I kept him in the park. Barely. The dude almost muscled it out. You guys are talking about me, aren't you? What? No. Why would we? We're having a strategy session. The subject is pitching. Just let us do our thing. Get back in the outfield. Paranoid. Totally. Now you're talking about me. Yes, we changed the subject to annoying teammates. This game could last a while. We got takeout last night. I saved you a fortune cookie. Thanks. 
but they should call these things non-fortune cookies, you know. They never actually predict the future. They don't tell you about stuff that's coming. They're just sayings like time is money or wisdom is when you realize you don't know at all. Once, just once, I'd like to get a fortune that tells me exactly what's about to happen. Rip. Crack. In under 10 seconds, you'll be attacked by a crazed, one-legged seagull. Right. Ah, oh, the county fair. Thanks for inviting me, my boy. No prop, Gramps. The rides, the balloons, the fried dough. Wow, this really takes me back. I used to attend this very fair when I was your age. What memories! See that garbage can? I threw up into that in 1952. Wow! Ride the rip snorter. Only three tickets. Say, those are some fine looking tattoos you've got there, fella. Ah, uh, thanks. There's nothing I appreciate more than a good tattoo. Wanna see mine? This'll just take a minute. Hey, look, Gramps, it's school picture guy. Shh, kid. Don't blow my cover. Here at the fair, I'm known as Looney the Balloon Sculptor. I can't step out of character or I'll shatter the illusions of hundreds of youngsters. Squee, squee. You've already shattered them, lad, but... Yeah, you call that a dinosaur? Sir, before you go on this ride, I have to issue you a warning. For older riders, there's a slight risk of a heart attack. Heart attack? Pfft. You wanna get my attention? Tell me a ride might give me kidney stones. Now that's pain. Is he going on the ride or not? Ever had kidney stones? I mate. You're gonna try to ring the bell? Gramps, you're 80. So what? I'm fit as a fiddle. Remember, boy, age is only a number. Plonk. So is blood pressure. I, I just got dizzy. Wow, Gramps, we went on all the wildest rides. We visited the haunted house, we did the monster maze, and you barely broke a sweat. Doesn't anything freak you out? Yep, that. Oh, right. There is nothing more terrifying than a county fair porter john. Whoa! That's enough crazy rides for one day. Good timing, it's three. We should head over to tent five. What's in tent five? Competition, son. Bare knuckled, no holds barred competition. Welcome to Thunderdome. Pie contest, huh? We get to eat pies? Sorry, champ. It's not an eating contest. It's a baking contest. And your grandma's pie is going to win. Oh, stop it, Vern. It's all in fun. But do you think you'll win? If there is even a speck of justice in the world. You've never entered the pie contest before, Graham. I know. But when I came to last year's fair, so that Louis Bailey's cherry pie had won the blue ribbon, I... Well, I don't want to sound unkind. Oh, go ahead. The woman used candy cherries. There, I've said too much. Marge, have you have a pie in the contest? Hello, Louis. Yes, I do. I made a cherry pie. How about you? Blueberry rhubarb. Oh my, that sounds heavenly. So does yours. 
Good luck, Marge, you smug little tot. You too, Louie, you Crisco-covered harpy. Ooh, the judge is tasting my pie. Smack. Hmm, tasty. Very tasty indeed. And now he's trying yours, Marge. Smack. I will sell my family to a gang of hobos for another bite of this paragon of pie perfection. In your face, Louie. Congratulations on your blue ribbon, Marge. I'm sure we'll be seeing you back here again next year to defend your title. No, I don't think so. I entered once and I won. I have nothing left to prove. Mic drop. That's my wife. Guess your weight, sir. If I don't get it right within one pound, you win a prize. You're on. All right, let's see here. Hmm. You, sir, weigh precisely 165 pounds. Huh? Nope. I've never weighed even an ounce over 162. Ah, a skeptic. All right, we'll let the scale decide. Hop on, my good man. You eat a lunch of bratwurst, fried dough, onion rings, and ice cream and cotton candy, and go straight to your butt. Pat, pat. Spitzy, no! What are you doing drinking out of the bed bath? That water is nasty. It's probably ch chock full of bird viruses. I know you're hot and thirsty, but that's what your water dish is for. There, use it. Ah, <sighs> Is this a good time to resume our debate on the comparative intelligence of cats and dogs? No. Championship game today, gang. This one is for all the marbles. These guys are undefeated, but don't let them intimidate you. They can be beaten. Actually, statistical analysis suggests that's highly unlikely. Francis, remember our talk about timing? This tiny slice of the pie chart is us. I hate these guys. They think they're so much better than we are. Statistically speaking, they do have an overwhelming competitive advantage. They are as statistical superiors in every measurable offensive and defensive metric. Plus they have power bars and we only have orange slices. I am so depressed right now. We're only down by two, guys. We can do this. Well, it's possible, but based on statistical analysis, it's far more likely that we'll lose. No, we're going to win. Actually, our win probability at this moment is only we're going to win. That's what I was about to say. Two outs, Francis. It's up to you. Don't think about analytics. Just crush one. How am I supposed to not think about analytics? That's how my brain works. My brain is telling me that the probability of me getting hit in this situation is... POW! He did it! Francis hit a walk-off homer! We're champs! I can't believe it. I mean, what are the odds? Approximately 654 to 1. What an exciting game. Congratulations, Francis. You really came through. Thanks, Mr. Wright. You're a hero. An experience like that should be a part of every kid's childhood. 
What was your hero moment, Dad? Ten seconds later. Awkward, awkward silence. Let's just be happy for Francis. Heads up! Dunk! Sorry, little dude. The wind took it. That's okay. Hey! Where are my glasses? They should be right here. Huh? That's weird. Where could they have gone? Slop, slurp, slurp, slop, slop. I think we've disproven the theory that glasses make everyone look smarter. Spitzy, you idiot. What's up, guys? We're gonna nail Gina with these water balloons. She'll be walking by here any minute now. We'll bomb her from up in this tree. Won't it be hard to climb the tree while you hold the balloons? Hmm, yeah. Tell you what, you climb up and I'll toss you the balloons. Gotcha. Okay, throw them up. Right. Pow! Hey! Gina, care to join me? On the bright side, we're keeping cool on a hot day. Don't try to spin this.